let's talk about relations and functions. Our main goal is going to be talking about functions, but uh, we really want to put it in the more general concept context of relations. A relation is just any way to relate one variable to another. Uh, almost all the time, these variables are going to be uh, real numbers. And so technically, it's just a set, uh, you could think of it as a list, sometimes a ginormous list, of x, y pairs. So the simplest kind of thing you can imagine is just a table where I say that one variable is related to the other. And so you can be, have a list of pairs that when x equals 0, we're relating that to the value y equals 5. When x equals 1, we're relating it to the y equals 3. Um, etc. We've just got a list of pairs of x's and y's. Most people prefer to be able to visualize that as points in the plane. So let's look at that on Desmos. Um, so for example, here we've got the x value 0 is related to both the y value 4 and 5. x value 1 is related to both 2 and 3. Uh, x value 3 is related only to y value minus 1. So we're going to see that for most of a, a purposes, this fact that there's more than one y value related to each x value is going to be unpleasant. But for a relation, that totally makes sense. That's totally legal. So more examples where it's not just a finite list. Um, a circle, the classic example, we've seen just a little bit right at the end of last uh, semester, how you can write an equation for a circle that has to do with Pythagoras that's going to come up over and over again uh, mathematically in the next few years. And of course, we have a picture of that. Oh, and sorry, I changed it. I wanted to make it a little bigger. That's actually x squared plus y squared equals 16. And so that is um, the graph of this relation. It's really, essentially, it's a list of points, just an infinite number of points, x, y pairs. So for example, 4, comma 0 or 0, 4 are uh, points, pairs that are in this relation. Now, this again has the property that there's more than one y value for almost all these x values. So z, x equals 0 gets related to y equals minus 4 and y equals plus 4. So this um, idea of sometimes having a table of values, sometimes thinking of a relation as defined by an equation, all the x, y pairs that satisfy an equation, or um, all of the points, which are really x, y pairs in the plane that are on some curve or in some set, these are all different ideas of how you represent a relation. Another example would be like a diamond. Uh, it turns out that this is, has a very nice expression in terms of absolute values. Um, absolute value of x plus absolute value of y equals 4. Um, we might uh, get to the point of sort of manipulating those, but the main thing is I wanted to see the picture. Again, a different kind of set in the plane that relates x and y. It really can just be any kind of set in the plane. Often it's going to be some sort of curve, but it doesn't absolutely have to be. Once again, I'm really kind of focusing on examples where there's more than one y value for most x values. So x equals 2, notice is related to y equals minus 2 and y equals plus 2. And we're going to really think of that as a bad feature uh, a lot of the time. Sideways parabola. Um, turns out this is just x equals y squared. And um, again, don't have to be too familiar with the, the algebra that corresponds to this. But this is, again, just a set of points that we see that x equals 4 is related to y equals 2. Um, x equals 2 is related to y equals root 2. x equals 0 is related to y equals 0. And again, we have this property that the same x value relates to multiple y's. And that is an interesting fact. So in fact, let's talk about um, functions. Functions are a special kind of relation where each x gives only one y. And that is a very important property. And I've been focusing on ones that fail to have that property. So we can see the contrast with functions. When you have that property, you can think of x as the input and y as the output of some sort of machine that uh, takes x, manipulates it, does something interesting to it, either by looking up on a table or calculating a formula, or it really could be anything, and spits out an output y. Um, and that only makes sense if you have this property where each x is related to only one y. So you know what the definite output is going to be. So modifying the table we had before, uh, we would have something where now the x's are all different. 
And now the y values can be whatever they want to be because we don't have the same x value repeated twice. Um, how, do we, how do we tell from a graph that this is going to be the case? And let's go over back over to that Desmos. Okay. And so I'm going to change. I have these points. So I change these to 4, 5, and 6. So now, um, what does it look like graphically to have this, this uh, property that every x value only has one y value? It says pick an x value. Look at the vertical line through that x value. You should only have one y value. That means you should only have one point on the graph on each vertical line. So that's called the vertical line test. And it just means that um, any vertical line intersects the graph at most once. So for example, I could graph like y equals, be something a little, little interesting like x cubed minus x. Let's have the computer graph that for us. A little bit of an interesting graph. Ooh, it's kind of big. Um, and ooh, that's, that's, I, I want to change the scale a little bit because I forgot this would be kind of look, be, look a little weird. Okay. All right. So that's kind of a good graph to look at here. If I pick out any X value, minus two, minus 1.7, minus 0 0.5, 0 0.632, I think about the vertical line through each of those x values, it only intersects that graph once. So that's going to be the graph of a function. And the notation we're often going to use for that is y equals f of x. So those parentheses are a new use of parentheses. Well, you've seen this before, this is a review, but compared to algebraic uses of parentheses, that's a different kind of use of parentheses. Really, let me just highlight a, a, a misconception that often happens here. Um, oops. This, um, this is not a number f times a number x. It's a much more sophisticated thing. It represents the number x being fed into the machine named f. And often we just need names for things. And that's just a generic way to represent, hey, I've got this machine, and somewhere else I will tell you how to do it, what the formula is. Um, and that f of x is saying feed x into f. So for example, if, if it's defined by a formula, let's do this one again. Right. If that's the definition, then I can apply that. Let's say f of minus 2, I just plug in minus 2 everywhere I see an x. That happens to be minus 8 plus 2 equals minus 6. Okay. Um, so functions are going to be our primary object of study for the rest of the time, sometimes in general, sometimes uh, particularly special functions like, for example, polynomial functions, which we already know a lot about. Um, and we want to recognize that um, they can be given by formulas, they can be given by graphs, in which case they have to satisfy the vertical line test. Um, they can be given by tables, in which case you shouldn't have two x's associated to different y's, or the same x, sorry, the same x associated to two different y's. Um, and I'm going to talk in the next video about one of the most important questions we can ask about a function once we are sure that it is indeed a function.